Hi, my name is Greg Anderson and I'm part of a small group of volunteers that manage a TV translator facility up here in northern Utah near where I live. I thought I might explain briefly what is a TV translator and why do we need them. So I thought I could start with um, AM radio. That was the first real mass media medium. And AM radio was nice because the broadcast signal could travel long distances. It would bounce off the atmosphere and then off the ground and then off the atmosphere and just kind of keep on going until you were, you know, quite a ways away. FM radio and TV are different from that. They rely more on a line of sight uh, reception model. So, um, you know, it's just a straight line, no bouncing up and down. And if there happens to be something like a mountain in the way and you're on the wrong side of that mountain, you might not receive any FM radio or TV from, you know, whatever the source happened to be. In areas where the land is relatively flat, uh, they have TV transmission towers, which are, you know, about as far tall as they can get them, maybe 1,500 or 2,000 feet up, uh, you know, like a skyscraper uh, in height. And, um, you know, they'll travel as far as they can, line of sight, but you actually get to a point where the curvature of the earth makes it... Uh, difficult or impossible to keep receiving from, from those facilities as well. Now, most TV transmission facilities and TV stations are based uh, around large metropolitan areas and, you know, population centers. But as you get farther and farther out to where, um, you know, there aren't as many people out there, uh, you know, it's still nice for them to have over-the-air TV and radio services. So they use translators. And what the translator does is it, uh, you know, it's out near the fringes of reception. They'll receive whatever the transmission is and then rebroadcast it on a different frequency and keep it going out. Uh, it has to use a different frequency so there's no interference between um, the new frequency and the original frequency uh, in that area. That's what TV translators are all about. Now I'll give you an example of what we do at our facility here in Utah. As it turns out, Utah has a large network of translator facilities, and you know, I guess you could call them relay stations, if that makes more sense. Um, Utah probably has the most complicated one in the United States, and it's the, the reason for that is that uh, there's only one set of major network affiliate TV stations in the state of Utah. They're all based in Salt Lake City. There's not a big enough population in other parts of the state to support, say, a second CBS affiliate or NBC affiliate or, or something like that. So, um, yeah, the entire state is serviced through translators. Um, you know, I got a map here that shows you kind of how complicated this network is. As you can see on the map, 80% of the viewing population for Utah is serviced by the main transmitter facility at, um, at Farnsworth Peak outside of Salt Lake City. That covers you know, most of the population center in the whole state. Uh, in, in our case, we're just over the mountain from Ogden. Ogden is able to receive the main transmission from Farnsworth Peak or from all these uh, TV stations in Salt Lake City, but we're on the other side of the mountain, so we can't. Uh, I'll just, you know, show you uh, on the map what it looks like for us. There's Farnsworth Peak, and there's us. And if I just show you, you know, trying to get that signal to us, there's a big old mountain in the way. So what can we do? Well, we were able to utilize that mountain. Up on the top of Mount Ogden, there was already some communications uh, facility up there, so we were able to uh, use part of that facility for our purposes. Now we have a microwave link, uh, so a really high quality uh, signal coming from Farnsworth Peak through the microwave relay station on Mount Ogden, and then that has a clear shot down into our valley where we have our transmission facility on the, on the side of a hill that is able to service um, most of the population of our valley. So that works out pretty well for us. Now, because we're translating the channels from their original channel to a new channel, um, 
in the old days of analog television, let's say, for example, Channel 7 from Salt Lake City would come into our facility and would be rebroadcast out to our valley on Channel 35. Uh, when the people in, in this area just got used to the fact that, well, if you turn on Channel 35, you'll get the same thing that you would get on Channel 7 if you were on the other side of the mountain. Uh, well, with digital TV, um, really none of the channels that you're watching are truly being broadcast on the same channel that your receiver is telling you that they're on. It's almost like a series of aliases, but your receiver knows how to interpret this, so if you try to turn on channel 7, even though it might be channel 35 or whatever it happens to be in your area, your receiver will properly tell you, oh, by the way, this is channel 7. So now we're able to offer in our valley uh, all the digital channels which come in identified by your receiver box as the proper channel. But remember, your receiver box or your television, if it's a you know, newer television with a built-in digital receiver, uh, is, is interpreting this alias for you. So uh, that's why one of the most important, well, I mean, it's essential when you set up a new television or, or maybe a receiver box that you have to scan for channels. And then that receiver box or television will interpret what those channels are and, and display them on the screen as channel 2, channel 7, whatever, channel 7.1, 7.2, all those digital channels that are available. So if you took that same receiver that was programmed in our valley, took it to the other side of the mountain where you could receive the same channels, um, they wouldn't come in on that receiver. You'd have to rescan so that that receiver could then say, oh, wait a minute, now we're, trans we're not translating those channels, we're on these other channels. Uh, it works out. It's something that you as a consumer usually don't have to worry about. But one thing you do have to worry about with digital television is um, it's, it's really an all or nothing proposition. Back in the analog days, um, up here in the valley, because our transmitters are a lower power than you know, the main transmitter at Farnsworth Peak, um, you might get sort of fringe reception up here. And if you put your rabbit ears up and get them tuned in just so, uh, you might have gotten a snowy or staticky picture, not the most crystal clear picture, but something you could watch. Well, in the age of digital TV, because of uh, the streaming nature of this digital stuff, it's really an all or nothing proposition. You're either going to get it well enough that you've got the digital stream and it looks like a crystal clear perfect picture, or if your reception's not good enough, you're really not going to get anything. So it's not as easy as just stick an antenna up there and you know, tweak it for you know, two minutes and, and you're done. Uh, you might have to spend some quality time uh, setting your antenna up, getting it aimed just at the right place. You might have to add a small um, amplifying unit to get that antenna to work at its optimal efficiency. But once you've got that, you've got some really quality crystal clear stuff. And in the old days, the analog days up here in our valley, People got used to just, you know, spotty reception as good as we could do. But today, we've got some of the best reception you can get. And now, uh, you used to be here in the rural areas, if you weren't getting television very well, maybe if your neighborhood was wired for a cable TV, you could try that. Or, barring that, you could subscribe to a satellite service and you could pay whatever the monthly rate would be. Sometimes that can get kind of costly. Um, but now, what we're able to offer with our translator is such a pure, nice uh, signal that it actually, I think, looks better than what some of the uh, satellite systems are able to offer. Because, let's face it, um, these satellite systems are offering local channels from several different markets, and they just kind of squeeze that and compress that and, and, you know, and do the best they can over their satellite, which is very crowded with a lot of different channels up there. We've got dedicated transmission, retransmission of what's coming from, uh, for us, Salt Lake City, and it looks great. And when high definition is available, we're able to offer high definition to our, uh, you know, the people we serve here in our valley. And, uh, and, and it's wonderful.